Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. So in this video today, I'm going to show you how I finished filling up this page spread in my art journal. So this is the sunset sky outside the west window in my house. And well, it's not that fancy, but still it's pretty interesting. And I'm going to sketch it in my art journal. Okay, so as always, I like to start drawing with my waterproof ink pen. So this time I'm using a Unipen 0.5 millimeter fine liner pen. And as you can see, I'm just drawing the contour of the rooftops and chimneys. Lots of triangles and trapezoids. And I'm going to stop for now before adding further details because the uh, sunset color the glory is going to fade away pretty soon. I'm going to paint the sky first before I, before I finish the details of the houses. So here's my Etcher brand watercolors with 24 half pens in it. And I'm just using my large tip Hobain water brush to wet the area first with water and wet on wet some lemon yellow mixed with medium yellow the bright sunshine color, nice and loose on there, and wet on wet some orange. Layering is pretty important for sunset skies and mixing green and cerulean blue to get this fresh turquoise color for the top of the sky. The evening sky is always this nice fresh turquoise color not blue anymore. And now I'm grabbing some ultramarine blue with pink purple to get this dark blue purple color and using my medium tip Sakura water brush and using a variety of thin brush strokes just to lay the dark shades for the cloud. And just let the two colors blend together. Just let the uh, blue, purple, and the orange blend together, adding some more stronger orange around the horizon. And just adding a little bit of a little cloud over there on top, sticking out, and putting on some cerulean blue on top because these clouds, I think they're turning into a more vibrant kind of blue. So I'm just laying this cerulean blue on top a little bit and around the horizon with super thin brush strokes. Hey, so now I'm coming back to my fine liner pen to add the details for the houses, starting with the rooftops, finishing up those triangles and moving down the body part of the houses are mostly squares and rectangles. There's a little bit of evergreen tree on the right side, windows, pretty simple um, rectangle shapes. And I like to shade in the windows with solid black ink just to give the houses more density. And when we're sketching a landscape, we don't have to s finish every single part of the objects. As you can see, I'm just sketching half of those houses. And for the bottom part, I'm gonna leave it for your imagination. There's a very loose way to sketch a landscape. We don't have to sketch every single part. And now I'm back to my watercolors. I just wetted the whole house areas with clear water and just adding this leftover green mixed with brown. This is the tone of these houses in the evening. And brown or burnt sienna for the rooftops of these houses, nice and loose and quick brush strokes. Switching to my medium tip Sakura water brush to add bits of blue just to give these houses more three dimension by adding this blue shade here and there around the windows. Some shade underneath the roof and on the other half of the chimney. Mixing blue and green and a little bit burnt sienna for this evergreen tree. Just another layer of brown, so we can make a brown darker by mixing a, a bit of ultramarine blue into it. And that's it. That's my finished sketch of the evening sky.
And the next day in the late afternoon, after coming back from grocery shopping at Costco, I'm going to sketch these two mini donuts that I bought. And here's the look of my art journal page so far. I'm going to put the two mini donuts right here in this space. And just quickly visualize the size and placement on this little white space. Starting with the one on the left. It's not a perfect circle. Really cute little chubby shape. And the other one, I just decided to move it around to there's a bit of overlapping. And using pretty gentle pressure to control my pen to have these light little lines for the surface texture of these donuts. Add a tiny bit of hatching to suggest shade just to give these simple shapes more interest by doing a little bit of hatching to suggest dimension. And just taking some time to write down the time and a little note. And as always, I start with my large tape Hobain water brush just to wet these two little areas so the colors can spread out quickly and easily. Lemon yellow mixed with medium yellow. Here and there, very translucent first layer. And now getting ready for the second layer. Orange mixed with a bit of medium yellow. Wet on wet. I just switched to my medium tips Sakura water brush too, just so I can do a little bit more detail. Nice and loose. Just let the two layers blend together softly. Third layer, brown or burnt sienna mixed with a little bit of orange. And here and there, nice and loose. Just let the colors blend together softly without too much stirring. And mixing a bit of dark brown or raw umber. Okay, and I'm going to let it dry for like three minutes. Now, as you can see, the color tend to fade away a little bit as, as it dries. This is how watercolor works. So after three minutes, when everything is dried, I'm adding this fourth layer with burnt sienna and a little bit of blue just to give this even more three dimension to suggest shade. Nice and round, because these are spherical things. The shade looks like kind of like crescents, just like the shade on the moon that we see on Earth. And now I am going to quickly add a um, platform for these two little donuts, just a table color. Burnt Sienna was a little bit pink pretty watery because this color is very similar to the donuts. I want, I'm keeping it watery just so it's not so competitive with the donuts colors. And ultramarine blue with a little bit of purple and green. It's very light little two shadows. Slightly darker around the bottoms. Just like wet on wet when I'm doing painting my shadows, I like to paint wet on wet, nice and loose and soft. And that's it. And the next thing I'm going to sketch in my art journal is this box of roast chicken from Costco. We had a little bit for snacks and I'll sketch the box. Here's the look of my current art journal and I'll put the chicken right here. And so the plastic cover of the chicken is a prism shape, a very round prism shape. As you can see, I'm just doing the outline now for the plastic cover and the rim underneath the label, nice and round following the curve. Finishing up the rim, the layers of rim for this plastic cover. Right over here. That's the top part of the box of chicken and the bottom tray here. And with these vertical reliefs and the end of the label right there. Just adding the details on the label, the name of the brand, 
for the letterings, I'm just using squig squiggly lines to show the words and the top ring on the plastic cover. There are actually a lot of these repetitions of stripes popping up on the plastic cover. It really gives the three dimension for this cover. And now I'm going to draw the other side of the tray visible through the plastic cover on the other side and drawing the details of the roast chicken inside. Just following what I see, draw these pretty random curvy lines to show the uh, different parts of the chicken and the other end of the tray seen through plastic, adding a bit of uh, black shade, this is the inner black tray, add a bit of hatching lines to give a sense of shade. And that's it for the drawing part. Okay, now I'm ready to paint watercolors again. So just wetting the chicken area with clear water. First layer, just some medium yellow mixed with a little bit orange, pretty watery. And yeah, leaving you know those white spots over there to show the highlight of the plastic. A little bit, you know, reflective color of the chicken on the plastic cover. Super watery. Now I'm gonna paint the tray on the bottom. So I mix my own um, black color by mixing ultramarine blue, purple, and green. A little bit for the rim too, nice and loose, leaving some little streaks of white to show highlight for the inside too. And I just mix in some clear water into this um, blue tone to dilute it for the shade color of the plastic cover. And now I'm going to add a second layer for the roast chicken. I just dried a bit now with brown or burnt sienna mixed with orange using very loose little lines just to give a sense of, of roast chicken with this color. Mixing leftover blue into this brown to get a darker tone of brown. And mixing even more leftover blue to get the burned part of the roast chicken. This is just wet on wet. And just adding some final polish. Just being very cautious with the uh, plastic cover. I just painted one layer and just leave it there to show the transparency. Just adding lots of bit of shade for the black tray here and there. A little bit for the label coming down. And just painting the brand over there. It's black. Now I'm ready to paint the shadow. So just use left leftover mix of blue, green, and pink purple. Wet on wet, two layers. Darker around the very bottom of the tray, and that's it. And after a few more minutes, I just wanna add some more accentuation for the inside of the tray. A more intense dark blue, and a little bit more contrast for this pl transparent plastic cover. So less water and a little bit more paint pigment in this mix of blue, purple, and green. That's it. That's the look of my art journal spread so far. And the next thing I want to sketch is this big bottle of salsa from Costco today. So when drawing a bottle, I always like to start with the lid first. It's a very round oval. It's a pressed cylinder shape, the ring underneath, and the left and right shoulder, nice and round for the chest part. It's the middle part of the bottle. The bottom is nice and round 
for all cylinder vessels. Yeah. And now I'm just adding these label details, the name of the brand, and just coloring all these letters with black ink as it is, as I see. And all of these little letters are following the surface curve of the cylinder. And these veggies too. Just adding little bits of uh, salsa texture seen through the transparent bottle and the highlight spots. Add a bit of hatching there on the lid. And now I'm ready to paint watercolors. So just wetting the whole bottle area with clear water by squeezing my large Hobain water brush. The first layer is a mix of red and orange. This is the lightest tone that I sense. It may not be visible, but I can sense it underneath. Right over there and then leaving those little bright white spots of highlight. Using some leftover blue, purple to paint the lid. And use this red magenta to paint the tomato here and there on the label. Purple for the onion, green for the peppers, and bits for the uh, garlic. And this label overall has a blue color, just using cerulean blue mixed with a little bit of ultramarine blue. This blue color is really nice contrast with the red color of salsa, cold and warm colors. And adding some leftover greens here and there for the pepper and the, uh, the stem of the tomatoes on the label. Little bits here and there with very small brush strokes. A little bit shade for the white parts around the uh, letters. Now for the second layer of the salsa is the mix of burnt sienna or brown into the red. So I get this red brown color. As you can see, I'm not covering every single space of the first layer. Now the two layers together is really giving more density and three dimension. A little bit green to show the green pepper pieces inside. And third layer. I just mix in a little bit ultramarine blue into the red brown color to show the shade on the uh, right hand side because the light comes from the left. Now it looks even more three dimensional. A little bit shade for the lid using leftover blue purple. Every little single area of the object is pretty important and lastly the shadow nice and round wrapping around the bottom darker around the base nice and loose that's it and here is the look of my art journal spread so far i have half of the page up there to fill and i think i'm gonna fill it with the uh, nice soft sunset color outside my reading room window, the north sky. And I decided to draw a rectangular frame because the sunset sky on the left doesn't have a frame. So with frame and without a frame, it's actually a pretty nice balance between two pages. And after that, I'm starting to draw the house in the middle and connecting the pole and the tree in front of it finishing drawing this tree and some more trees in the distance and this house on the right side, more trees behind it. And these are the side views of the, uh, the rooftop structures of this house and other houses behind it. Just drawing the smaller chunks of this house structure and the windows, the balcony, 
the big and small windows and little bushes in front of it. I just simplify them into very simple squares and rectangular shapes. The fences wrapping around it. There's another street lamp over here. Some more trees behind and the evergreen trees in the foreground and my neighbor's rooftop, side view of their house. Add a bit of a texture for the trees in the foreground. Adding some more very simple details for this house on the right. And there's another corner of the house peeking in on the very right corner. The mountain behind. Nice soft curvy line there. Now I'm ready to paint watercolors. So I'm just wetting the sky area first with clear water. So the different colors can merge together nice and soft. The first color is a mix of uh, lemon yellow and medium yellow. And then a little bit of red orange. I'm painting the mountain, the first layer is pink, because this is how I sense it. The top part of the sky is a mix of cerulean blue and a little bit of ultramarine blue. It's blending nice and soft with the orange yellow below. And just wetting the house and tree areas below with clear water. Just adding this um, yellow ochre for the exteriors of the houses and dark brown for the rooftops or burnt umber. Viridian green mixed with a bit of yellow ochre and tiny bit of brown for the trees. These greens are very muted because it's late in the evening and they're not that vibrant anymore. And just grabbing some ultramarine blue to paint the mountains on top of the pink glow. Just giving so much more atmosphere by underpainting it with pink. And another layer for these trees, viridian green, mixed with a little bit of burnt sienna or brown. Very nice, soft and fuzzy effect. And another layer for the rooftops with raw umber or dark brown. And that's pretty much it. That's my finished sketch. And here's the look of my finished art journal spread with two sunset skies on two different days, food and drinks below. This is a really typical way that I compose an art journal page. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. I update my channel two to three times a week. And just a quick announcement that I'll be hosting another round of Sunday sketch togethers in March. So every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we meet live on Zoom and I'll show you my full process drawing and painting with watercolors in my art journal. So if you miss part of the class or the whole class, you still get the recording to follow up later. So after all, you have lifelong access to four class recordings, each one at least 90 minutes long. So you can always watch and rewatch to follow up at your own time and speed later after the live class. So the sign up link is down here in the, in the description of this video. Okay, that's it for, for today. See you again very soon next time. Have a great day.